everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and welcome to the recap of the March 2021 Chemnitz Dialogue Livestream. This month we dyed yarn inspired by this beautiful iridescent hummingbird and a bright pink flower. Uh, we tied a lot of yarn in this video, including 300 grams of Knit Picks gloss fingering weight yarn. This yarn is 70% non-superwash merino, 30% silk. And at your request to this greens and browns colorway, I added a pop of pink. It's now the next morning. We haven't flipped it yet. And there is still some pink color down in that end. So what I'm going to do is take this skein of dry stroll and just soak up some of that extra pink. You could probably do this with like a paper towel or a rag or something, but I wanted to wait to flip this until it had cooled, mainly because I didn't want the pink to go all over everything. And ooh, the coverage is pretty good. Um, I did think I wanted to flip because we started cool with no acid, so things had an opportunity to spread a fair amount, but I do think I'm going to want to add a little bit more of some of these greens. I'm not going to add more pink, and I'm not, I might add a little more brown, and I'm not going to add more of this golden poppy color. Uh, I do think I took a picture. I don't remember if I took a picture of all the colors I used in here. Meanwhile, here is a beautiful colorway we created with some of the leftover greens and browns. I think on camera it did look a lot darker than it is in person. It is not even 12 hours later and all of the color is in our stroll. I think this was teddy bear brown and maybe moss green? Not entirely sure, but maybe. Um, and I poured them onto the different sides and we've got something that so far looks like it was dip dyed. It's really great. I'm now going to go steam set this for 30 minutes. And a lot of the rest of the yarn we dyed in the stream, I'm going to go ahead and wash off camera. I put my respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves back on and used some acid dye, some Dharma acid dye in Teddy Bear Brown, Moss Green, and Chartreuse uh, to complete the paler patches of this colorway and give a little more variation. The first side, since we added liquids, uh, was fairly even. And so this time I'm spreading the colors, not a ton, but a little more randomly. And in between colors, I am rinsing off my gloves. I am wiping them on this yarn to help distribute the dye. The pan is cool. So once I was satisfied with the amount of color I added, I turned the heat back on and heated the pan on low for 30 minutes. I also ended up bringing some sour apple into the mix and I moved the colors through a little bit more. It'll be really interesting to see what these colors do once this has set. I just turn the heat on and I flip it again because I may decide to add some color to the other side to sort of break up those the colors in there a little bit from where it was feeling a little stripy, mainly to help play on this feel of like light and iridescence a little bit. So we'll see how this goes, but I am really into it. Okay, it's been probably at least 30 minutes and there's a hint of brown that I'm not in a, some hints of green I'm not going to worry a lot about, but I do want to flip this and see where we are. So I actually really like it. I'm tempted. Part of me is tempted to add a tiny bit more color, but I also think that I like it and I don't want to go too far and I want to preserve a lot of what I did in the live stream. So I'm going to turn off the heat, let things cool completely, and then we will wash it off camera. 
I'll show you some pictures of what the blank looked like on screen, um, but there is absolutely pink in there. See, it was just, you couldn't really see it on the stream itself. Okay, let's open this up. Normally when I do something like this, I then steam set it right away, but today it took a little longer because I didn't have a steamer basket ready to go. But you can see how much color we have because I, when I was adding on the powder, I was adding it on, ooh, this is so pretty, really heavy. Um, and so that gave us, it's still gonna be speckled because you can see that we did not get complete penetration through. But this is a lot more like that sparkle colorway that I did for Hanukkah where I speckled and then once the dye absorbed, it spread a little bit. And so that's what doing some of that heavier speckling can do. And oof, the, what was that, the honey mustard, those little few gold pops in here. I have to say, I wasn't sure about the pink. I'm really, really glad that there are those pops of pink in here. Now, we are seeing some bleeding. Um, I'm going to continue to wash this off camera. Um, it's possible that uh, it's possible that there's some undissolved dye in here. Um, it's also possible that something didn't completely set. So I will be washing with, uh, let's see, it's not really that bad. Um, I'll be adding some soap and if I need to, I'll do vinegar and I can do an immersion soap of it. Uh, but <laughs> as I continue filming, I'm like, I wasn't planning on filming the washing, but since there was bleeding, some of that, uh, I guess I didn't use radioactive in this one. I guess I used chartreuse. Those two colors are very, very similar. Oh, but it's done. Um, so there was just a little bit to rinse out. I will go ahead and wash it a few more times, but that isn't very much bleeding. So, uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and wash everything else that we've dyed off camera. And so soon we'll come back and look at all of the dry yarn. This sock blank is gorgeous and perfect. This is my star. This is my submission for this month's dye along. We have this green and brown gradient that progresses and has some flux of orange and brown with these bright pops of pink throughout. The background color of this blank is actually a pale gray. I started out by really quickly soaking the yarn in some dilute gray dye. So that way we would have a base color that isn't off white. And it was really, really quick to do. I didn't even set it first. I waited to set that gray until we were done speckling. And because I find superwash yarn starts to absorb a little color so fast with acid, it worked great. I wanna flip over to show the wrong side of the blank. We do have color penetration all the way through, but not as much as on the other side. And from this edge here that started to unravel a little bit, you can see that we're gonna get a lot of fun speckles on it. And since this blank has two strands of yarn knit together, the color transitions, the pops of pink, all of those are gonna happen in the same place. And so it's gonna be perfect for knitting a pair of identical socks. I considered unraveling this blank myself, but I actually think I want to list it in my shop intact. And the reason for that is that I think that being able to see the blank and see the colors like this can really help me visualize what this would do when you knit it. Now, the colors wouldn't pool in the same way the speckles on the blank pool here, but when you see the yarn like this versus seeing it twisted up into a skein, you get a sense, okay, we've got grass green, a yellower green, a mossier green, and then brown. The pink goes all the way through. You can get those feels from looking at this. Now, whenever I list blanks on Etsy, I do always give an option for me to unravel it. 
And if someone buys it before this recap goes up, then I will insert a photo of what the yarn looked like unraveled. But from experience, I can say that we will have this gradient of greens with pops of pink and a lot of really heavy specklings on a gray base. I feel like this recap is a little bit all over the place. <laughs> we started the stream doing some crude swatches of a number of different acid dye colors. I originally thought that I wasn't going to bother doing that. I had looked at some of the past color swatches that I had played with, but it really did help me pick exactly what colors I wanted to use and really helped me think, yes, I want to use these as speckles. I can get that golden rusty yellow that I really wanted uh, using, I think it was honey mustard. And so that is what this skein is right here. And then this skein was a yarn mop uh, that I used while I was speckling. I wiped my hands on it randomly. And then after we dyed uh, a colorway on a silk base, uh, both of these and the blank are all 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. But after I was done with the powders, I did go and add some little bits of, I think a little more uh, brown, green, and pink, just to add a little bit more color to this very garden inspired yarn mop. Here is the finished silk yarn that I dyed. And I picked this silk base. This is Knit Picks Gloss. It is 70% merino. It's not super washed, 30% silk. And I picked it because of the shine of the silk might give, evoke some of the shine that we see on the feathers of the bird. And this is pretty. I'm hesitating a little bit because I'm not sure how I feel about the pink. I might feel differently once I see it twisted uh, or because that might give a better feel of how these colors blend together. I am glad that the pink sort of uh, dimmed a little bit. It was very neon and I like that it blended with the green to give us this more rose hue. You can actually feel like the bit of the feather that that our hummingbird is reaching to. Part of this though does feel like two different colorways. Like if I were to cut everything right there, this feels like a colorway and that feels like a colorway. So I'm reserving judgment for when I twist it. Twist it up. I actually like the pink. I like how that pops in and I think that it brings a fun element. I am surprised. I wasn't really sure about the pink. It didn't feel like it really fit, but you know, the pink does fit with that gold color, with the brown, and with that deeper green. And the bright green, I think, was throwing me it off, which I think works in this as well. But twisting this up can give you a sense of, if I were knitting and say that these were rows, how might these colors mix and play with one another? And so while I don't have the capacity to swatch everything that I dye here on the channel, this was a, twisting it can really help you decide how you feel about the final yarn. Finally, with the leftover brown, and I think, I think it was teddy bear brown and maybe moss green, I wanted to use up that dye and it looked like there was a ton of dye. So I popped 200 grams of stroll into a shoe box, a plastic shoe box and poured the dye on either end, sort of working it through with some acid so that way we could uh, leave no dye behind. And what we have are these medium tones. They are not as pigmented as I had expected. And I love that the colors, I mean, granted we poured up two ends, but we did stir it up and move it around. We have breaking in here. I see different like yellows kind of popping through. It is very sort of mossy, a little bit like, I mean, a little bit like pond scum or something, but not in a bad way, just earthy. It's very, very earthy. And I think that the two skeins may not be that well matched, even though they were dyed together, but they're gorgeous. Very, very different from when I dye. I really need to dye more just 
play with all the browns I have a lot more and maybe leave off the grays go for like just full-on brown now it is time for my favorite part of the Chemnitz Dialong recaps and it's time to look at some of the yarn that you dyed inspired by the same hummingbird photo that I was what colors and techniques did you decide to use and it's so fun to see how so many different people can be inspired by one photo, whether you just focused on the flower or the background or the wing of the bird. There's many different spots in here that you could focus on for your inspiration. And I think that it is all really beautiful. Thank you so much to everyone who submitted. And if you would like to potentially be featured in the recap of an upcoming Chemnitz Dye Along live stream, you can share the yarn that you dyed based on the inspiration photo using the hashtag Chemnitz Dye Along on Instagram. Uh, please just mention the month just in case if you're dying with an old photo, just mention the month and year uh, from the photo that you're inspired by or the theme of the photo so that way I know which month you're referring to. Or you can reply to the inspiration photo on the Chemnitz Facebook page with a photo comment of your yarn and I will feature as many as I possibly can in the recap. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I don't know yet what I am going to pick for April. It is currently still March as I am filming this recap, but it's a lot of fun and I have a uh, private Pinterest board filled with photos that excite me and inspire me. And I do try to mix up uh, the colors that are in the photo and the intensity of colors and various things each month. But if you have any suggestions or recommendations for things that you would like to see me draw from, uh, please let me know down in the comments. I tend to pick things from nature a lot, but occasionally going through royalty-free <laughs> images I find uh, something that really strikes my fancy that isn't uh, nature inspired. So I truly am open to a wide variety of themes. If you enjoy these videos, please make sure you're subscribed and you have your notifications turned on. Usually I try to plan the Chemnitz Dye Along live streams in advance, but occasionally uh, some of my live streams are fairly last minute. And if you want to make sure that you are notified uh, when they are going to happen, uh, turn on all notifications. YouTube should also then let you know when I release a new video. I am so excited by this blank. I absolutely love it. And I am so glad we added that pink. I was so unsure, and even in the recap, I was unsure about the pink and the silk, but the pink in this just really brings it to life. And it would have been pretty without it, but it just gives that fun touch, and I'm so, so, so happy. Anyway, thank you so much for watching.